Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In Luke chapter 11, we're going to start. Get out your King James Bible. This is going to be part 8 of the Take Heed. Okay, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, and then who's that he? That's Jesus. When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so on earth. And that's coming one day, people. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, Lend me three loaves. You know, it, it, it's midnight. I mean, how many people do you know that you can knock on their door at midnight and say, Hey, uh, yo, uh, uh, give me three loaves of bread, will you? Verse 6. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. In other words, Man, don't bother me. Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Verse 8. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now, what is importunity? According to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which I love, importunity is a noun, comes from the Latin. It means a pressing solicitation, an urgent request, an application for a claim or favor, which is urged with troublesome frequency. I mean, you know, <laughs> that means, you know, you're banging on the door a lot. You know, a troublesome frequency. Men are sometimes overcome by the importunity of their wives or children. That's it used in a sentence. Now, Jesus oftentimes told uh, stories, earthly stories that had a heavenly meaning. And I think that Hebrews chapter 4 applies to this, that, you know, uh, we're supposed to knock on the door. Okay, let's check out Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we, which have believed, do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the, the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Did you know that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Oh, yeah. Take a look at uh, Revelation 13 and verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Uh, that's not Christ. That's the Antichrist. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All right, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 4. And verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they 
shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Uh, do you know God rested on the seventh day, the Sabbath day that, you know, he made holy to, uh, you know, did he do that because he was tired? Uh, no, he did that as an example unto us that we should take one day a week to rest and to reflect upon spiritual things instead of, you know, trying to chase a buck, which, uh, in the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets says something about uh, earning money to put in a bag with holes. You know, I mean, when you got a bag with holes, what happens to all the coins? They fall out, right? So, all right. And I'm probably the world's worst Sabbath keeper. If, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, let's see. Verse 5, And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth, limiteth a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Yeah, in the day of the resurrection, uh, we're going to have rest. But in this world, we're going to have tribulation, trouble, persecution. Uh, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us th labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You see, people, the soul and spirit are two different and separate things. And I did a, a Bible, fairly decent Bible study, I thought, on body, soul, and spirit. So, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that scares me, people. That scares me. Because, boy, I tell you what, there's a lot of times. You know, Paul writes that, uh, he says, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. And he goes, oh, wretched man that I am. And boy, I can relate to that. There's so many times you want to be in the spirit, but you're in the flesh. Uh, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. In other words, nothing is going to be hidden. But all things are naked and opened under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Now, what has all this got to do with knocking on doors and asking for bread? Well, here we go. Seeing that, that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Here you go. Here's the punchline. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly, boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy 
and find grace to help in time of need. You know what it means to come boldly? It means strutting in like you own the place. Because let's face it, people, when you're a child of the king, I mean, you know, come on. It, 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 you think the king's going to tell his own son or daughter no? But just make sure that what you're asking is in God's will. Uh, and then, you know, let's face it, you're going to, you know, ask in God's will and boom, he'll give it to you. In James chapter 1, verse 4, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. All right, let's go to John chapter 14, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. And of course, he's speaking to the disciples there, but uh, you ever wonder why they always want you to, instead of calling him Jesus and calling Yeshua HaMashiach or whatever, uh, maybe they don't want you to use his name as laid out in the Greek Bible. Maybe that's why they don't want you. So, so let's go back to Luke 11. Verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves? For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. See, we need to ask for those things the Lord wants us to have. He wants us to seek those things that he wants us to have and, and knock on that door, be bold, and that door will be opened unto you. Verse 10, For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now think about this. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give for a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? I mean, and we're talking an earthly story for a heavenly application. You know, if you ask the Lord for something, he's not going to give you a scorpion or a serpent. No, 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 no. Uh, now, the devil's children might get a serpent or a scorpion, but, uh, well, that's another story altogether. Verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? 
Verse 14, and he was casting out a devil, and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And others, tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, Jesus, but he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusteth and divideth his spoils. And he, uh, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. He saith, I will go, I'm sorry, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. Now, this is the thing, people. If, if, if there's a person that's possessed of a devil and that devil gets cast out and that person does not get saved, born again, converted, they're in trouble. Listen to this. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. And the paps set has reference to uh, milky breasts. So blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Jesus, but he said, Yea, Rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. See, here it is. They were trying to put in a little Mary worship there. I mean, you know, here it is. Here it is almost 2,000 years ago, and they're trying to put Mary worship in there. Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. In first Kings chapter 4 and verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled 
the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Think about that. In 1 Kings 10, 23, So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. So, And it says, And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And speaking of Christ. Verse 32. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. And remember my ministry verse is John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That's it. Verse 34. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no dark, no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled, that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Boy, how would you like to invite somebody over for dinner and they say this to you? Ye fools! Did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? I mean, <laughs> boy, I tell you what, Jesus, uh, a lot of people would say, Jesus is really hateful. Oh, you are, you're such a divider, Lord. Wow. Verse 41. But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. Isn't that, isn't that just like the, the preachers today? They teach tithing. Oh yeah, you got to tithe. You got to do this. You got to that. But they don't talk about judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you Pharisees. For ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. I'm sorry, and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are as graves which appear not, and that men walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. Now, these are not uh, lawyers like we have today. These are people that went to uh, learn the Bible laws, like in the book of Leviticus. I mean, they are totally different. It's a sad thing that uh, Har Harvard and Yale and Princeton were originally Bible colleges. And when you went to law school, you learned the Bible law. You learned the book of Leviticus. And today they have classes on anal sex. Vile. And of course, what do you expect with a... Uh, well, if you last I looked uh, in 2018, the head of president of Harvard College was... Uh, Harvard University was a... a a guy that claims to be Jewish. What can I tell you? Woe unto you, ye lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens, grievous to be born, 
and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your little with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel. And who slew Abel? Cain. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, uh, began to urge him vehemently, <clears throat> vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. And, of course, the key verse was uh, verse 35. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. All right. Well, that's the end of Luke 11, part 8 of the Warning Take Heed series. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.